I'm Dr. Kristen R. Bromley. This Guitar 101 series, which is part of my online music academy, is a beginner through intermediate level guitar course similar to the in-person ones I teach at the university. The course progresses from complete beginner through gaining capability in playing songs in various styles and covers playing chords and melodies and reading chord symbols, tablature, and standard music notation. With the Guitar 101 course, we use three of the books from my Method Book series, Chords and Harmony Books 1 and 2, Note Reading Books 1 and 2, and Tablature, which are all available for purchase through Amazon and Google Play. Links can be found in the description below or at kristenbromley.com. You are of course welcome to participate in this course with or without the books, but with the books you can play right along with me on all the songs and exercises as intended. Plus, each book comes with exclusive access to additional hours of in-depth video lessons that go with each part of that book. If you find this Guitar 101 series helpful, please like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Alright, let's get to jamming in this week's lesson. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Brumley. Welcome to my online academy. I'm so happy to be spending this time with you working on the guitar, which I love and hopefully you love too. So this is lesson 20 of the Guitar 101 series, where we go from beginner to far beyond to get you introduced to all sorts of techniques used to play the guitar, especially playing chords behind some singing or behind somebody playing a melody. We also work on playing melodies through note reading and tablature reading as well. So it's great times and lesson 20 is great. In this lesson we're going to work on some new things. So we're going to continue to review the bar chords that we've worked on so far. And we'll work on some finger picking. But today we're going to introduce power chords. Or I should say I'm going to introduce power chords and we are going to work together on power chords. Which is an exciting day. That's super fun to work on power chords. We're going to continue to work on some new strumming patterns. Today we're specifically going to look at 6, 8, 9, 8, 12, 8 time. So, okay, let's go ahead and dive in. We'll start with our review of bar chords. So we're going to start on page 66 and 67, which is lesson 11. This is going to take us back to F and B flat. We haven't played these together for a little while, so we're going to review F and B flat, and then we'll also review C7. To start with the whole world in his hands. If you need to stretch a little as we get used to playing these bar chords and get warmed up on them, that is a okay. So we'll start with number one. He's got the whole. We're gonna be down, down, up, up, down, up. Here we go. He's got the whole. Okay, let's take it a little bit faster. He's got the oh, one, two, three. He's got the For me, pivoting between F and C7, I leave my ring finger down. Just pivot back and forth. Okay, we'll go over and do number three on page 67. Skip to my loo. Same strumming pattern. There you go. I want to ready and lost my heart. faster. I want to ready and lost my
68, let's turn over to page 68, and we're going to do number 7. So we're going to be on pages 68 and 69, starting with number 7, 12 bar blues. In F, so we get to bring in that B flat chord now. Going between F and B flat, I usually just pivot right on the bar. I just flatten out that ring finger. Okay, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, one, two, ready, and... Let's go over to page 69. We'll do number eight, My Country, Tis of the Down, Down, Up, Down, Up. Now, there's some places where we have multiple chords per bar. So in the third measure, we have F for two beats and then B flat on the third. So I can go down, down, up, down, up. Or I could just catch that beat three with a down strum. That's okay too. So in that one, that second chord comes in on beat three. We know that because it's sitting above beat three in the melody. On the last line in the second measure, we have B flat coming in on the second beat. We know that because it's sitting over the second beat in the measure. So I can go down, down, up, down. Up. Then in the second to last measure, we got B flat, F, C7, F. Almost glutton for punishment. You can go down, down, up, down, up, down. You could also just choose to do down strums on each of those. My a down, down, up, down, up. Three, two, one. My Kind of tricky. Let's do number nine, Waltzing Matilda. Down, down, up, down, down, up. One, two, up, three, four, up. Once a jolly swag man. Here you go. One, two, ready, and once a jolly swag man. Kept up by a billabong. on over to page 70 and do number 10 rock and robin down down up up down one two up up four up this is a fun review and up here hey i want two three four hey rocks in the treetop all the day long hopping in a bopping
gonna do a little bit with finger picking. If we flip on over to page 64, I'm gonna do a new pattern here today, which is number 12. This one's gonna lead into something we're gonna work on with the strumming later on, but sort of creates a 12-8 feel when we tripletize the beat. So normally we divide the beat into two, one and two and three and four and if we go further, which we haven't talked about yet, but if we go further, do 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 the subdivision is still divided into two. We can tripletize that, meaning we can insert three in place of the two. So when we do that, it creates this We've sort of done this thing, not really sort of, but actu in actuality, with number 22, one and a two and a one and a two and a, instead of one and two and three and. Just changes the emphasis of how we're playing those eighth notes. So number 12 is going to have this A, M, I, A, M, I, one and a two and a, and that repeats over and over. And then at the start of beats one and three, we're also going to have a thumb pluck on the bass note. One and a two and a three and a four and a. So you just want to get used to that on the E minor chord. off and I stopped doing the thumb pluck but you can kind of fade off on that. Let's go over and play these over on page 65 with these chord progressions. So let's do number two. It's gonna, it's gonna be one the two and the three and the four and the just like that. Here we go. One and the two and the ready and the go and the A. So D, G, and A7. One and a, two and a, ready and a, go and a. As we play these, it can really become, make us painfully aware of where maybe our left hand isn't always quite nailing the pitch that we're pushing down, or the place on the string we're pushing down, when we're finger picking. Strumming it gets covered up some, but it can become, we can become painfully aware of, oops, I'm sitting, I'm sitting a little wrong. And that's okay, it's good, it's good for us. Let's do number four. One and a, two and a, ready and a, go and a. We'll do one more. Let's do number seven. So A minor, D minor, and E seven. One and a two and a ready and a go and a.
So we'll go on and do some tablature now. Okay, so we're in the tablature now. We're going to start on pages 68 and 69. We'll start off with number 91, CC Rider. Probably a little bit of a familiar melody. It's going to use that middle finger quite a bit and some with the pinky. So we'll keep our fingers index in the first fret, middle in the second, ring in the third, and pinky in the fourth. We want to be equal employers of our fingers so that they all develop and so that we get so we can play more proficiently. Okay, so here we go. One, two, ready, and two, three. As I've mentioned in other lessons, you can use the videos that come with the book specifically. They go into greater detail on all the songs and exercises in all the books. We're going to go ahead though in this lesson and go on over to number 93, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. It's in the same key, so it's going to have some similar movements in our left hand and, well, in the picking hand too. Here we go. A one, two, ready, and... Okay, let's go on over to page 70 and we'll do number 94, King's Fold. This is a great old English melody. Here we go. I'll give us three beat counting and we'll catch four and one. So, one and two and three and... Okay, we're going to go over to pages 72 and 73 now, and we'll do numbers 97 and 99. So, Acres of Clams, this one's going to be a little bit easier because it's not going to use the pinky, but the new challenge is we're going to start reading notes down on that fifth string, which we've done in the note reading, but we haven't done yet here. We're in three-four time. I'll give us three, one, two, and we'll catch the pickup. Here you go. Three, one, two. Two. One, two.
three, one, ah. Uh. Okay, we'll go over and do number 99 on page 73. The water is wide. So I'll give us three, four, one, and we'll come in on two, three, and one. Three, four, one. Okay, go over to page 74 and we'll do number 101, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. This is probably a recognizable one if you've ever been to a baseball game. We're in 3-4 time. I'll give us 1, 2, 3 and we'll be in. Here you go. 1, 2, 3. Okay, let's go over and do some chords again. Okay, so back in the chords, we're going to be on pages 86 and 87, working on a little bit more strumming technique. In this particular lesson, we're working with 6-8, 9-8, and 12-8 time. So, we've done a little bit with 6-8 time with the finger picking, and we've talked about, or I should say I've explained, how we take, and instead of having three eighth notes with the emphasis being one and two and three and one and two and three and or one and two and three and we, we group three together and it becomes one and the two and the three eighth notes together I should say feel. So when we go ahead with our strumming, one of the best strumming patterns is, is letter E there. It's just to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Almost takes us back to when we did lesson two in the chords and we were just swinging the eighth notes. How interesting, right? Because when we swing a rhythm, we're really tripletizing the beat back that second eighth note further back into the beat usually with a tripletized foot. So six eight time one way we can treat it is with letter E down up down up down up let's do that with when Johnny comes marching humming down up down up that's gonna happen once per measure it's kinda of low one and the two and We can 
do that string pattern and all sorts of temples. You can take it faster. When one and two and two. to treat 6-8 and that's a great way. So with letters F and G then what's happening in the in these cases is that patterns, string patterns we've used for 3-4 time have been scrunched twice per measure and we can create a 6-8 feel with that. So 1, 2, up, 3, down, down, up, down. Speed that up a little bit. 1, 2, up, 3, 2, 2, up, 3, 1, 2, up, 3. We can get kind of a 6-8 feel with that one. So let's do the letter F. These ones, you gotta get them at the right tempo to sort of feel it. Or, or it has to be, it can be really slow. If it goes faster and faster, you really gotta be like, strumming emphasis. But we'll try it slow. One and a two I win. The down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. So let's try that one. One and a two and one. use letter E most of the time for 6-8, but let's try playing F and G a little bit faster. Practice. Work that right hand. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. at the other page, page 87, look at 12-8 time. 9-8 and 12-8 time, these sort of happen in place of 3-4 time and 4-4 time. So we sort of tripletize the beat instead of having 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a... And so letter H, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, two, three, four, up, bum, but up, 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 it's a great 12-8 progression. Well, not a great 12-8 progression, a great strumming pattern for 12-8. And all it is is down, up, down, 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 
twice. So just like with 6-8, we're kind of doing the same thing twice. And with this one also, I should say these patterns, down, up, down, 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 that first half would actually work for 6-8 time. So... Now I switched the strumming, so I'm going down, up, down on it, but... Done either way. I, that's another option for 6 8 time is just using that first half. And with that token, you could kind of use E, F, and G twice per measure for 12 8, but it's not really done. This is a really common pattern for that. Down, up, down, 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 down. Like, Oh Holy Night is a great Christmas song. That one's done like in 12 8. Um, what a Wonderful World. That one's sometimes done in 12-8, so it's really kind of in four, but it's got that tripletized feel under it. What I have here as number four is this tune Amazing Grace, which is normally done or has been done traditionally in 3-4 time, but it's sitting in 4-4 time. So one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, and a one. Which is the way I like to perform it. So we're going to practice this strumming pattern. For 12 for 12 eight time, we're going to superimpose that over Amazing Grace in 4 4 time. In 4 4 time. So one and a two and a three and a. Lots of songs get done that might have been a little bit faster. We, we could take it really slow. Which is usually how I like to do it. And I actually like to do it with the bar chords. Because some of the one, two, three can be more percussive than actually hearing the chord ring. But let's take it a little bit slower. One, two, three, and a... Uh, um. Now, if we use that finger picking pattern we were doing earlier, it'll work too. So, so we got this whole one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a. Ah! Uh -huh. 
hard to focus on that finger picking pattern and singing at the same time. Now, if we wanted to take letter H, our 12-8 strumming pattern, and turn it into a 9-8 pattern, so if we needed a 9-8 pattern, which is actually would match the 3-4 time that Amazing Grace is actually written in, we can just remove the strumming from beat 3 or beat 4. So if we remove beat 3, it would look like down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 one, two, three, one, and a two, three, and a, or we could take out beat 4, one, and a two, and a three, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a so if we apply that to Amazing Grace, then, as if it were back in 3-4 times, so... A 1, 2, 3, and a 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2. If we use that, we can use a 9-8 pattern over top of it. So we'll do letter H, and we'll pull out beat 3, so it'll be down, down, down. So one and a two and a seven in, in that third to last measure on beat three. Now, of course, this song can be done in regular three, four, and even regular four, four, but this just gives us a chance with a familiar song to sort of feel the nine, eight. Let's do it this time as if we took out beat four from letter H. So down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, 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 down. Amaze. One. Out of breath, one and a two and a. Um. a little introduction into 9-8 and 12-8 and some with 6-8 so stuff that we run into once in a while in the music that we're playing let's go ahead and do a little bit of note reading now okay so the note reading yes we're gonna start on page 46 we're gonna do numbers 7 through 9 in the last couple of lessons we've sort of warmed up the alternate picking and remembering where those notes are located over here in first position by using the C major scale we played from the lowest C note, which is the root, to the highest note in the position, which is G, down to the lowest note in the position, which is E, and back to C. We're going to use the A minor scale today, which is what we have there with 7, 8, and 9. It's going to start on the lowest A note, which is the open fifth string. It's going to play up to the highest note, which is G, down to the lowest, which is E, and then come back to A. The tonality is going to sound a little different. By comparison, the A minor scale has a flatted third or a lower third, so the compared to the major scale, the third is one fret lower. Same goes for steps six and seven. They are lowered by one fret as well. So the key of A minor and the key of C major, the A minor or the natural A minor scale and the C major scale have the exact same notes. Where we place an emphasis within the scale tells us whether our melody is minor or major, and you're going to hear a difference. So we'll go ahead with number seven. We'll start with the low A, four plucks per note. 
So you go red D and we're gonna have A. might seem a little weird to end on A as we've gone through all those notes, but that's where we are with our minor scale. Let's do number eight, two plucks per note. One and two and ready and go and... Let's do number nine, one pluck per note. Probably going to be the easiest way to hear that scale. We're going to go kind of slow. One and two and ready and go and... Now, it's really important that you do these scales accurately and in control. So if I'm going faster than you're able to, you should go slower and, and keep it in control. If we practice slow and get it in control, we create the pathways down our neurological system much faster and we get more secure as a player much quicker. If that is too slow and you could play it really accurately faster, You could do that, or you could go even faster than that. Then work up to those faster speeds. It's a great technical development thing to do. We're going to go over to page 48, though, and play number 14, Billy Boy. We're going to try and use that down, up picking, or what we call alternate picking, where we have those eighth notes back to back like that. So it's going to be one and two, and so here you go. One and two. Okay, let's go on over to page 50. We're going to do number 60, or number 16 and number 17. Snake Charmer. 
This does use those low notes on the A string, which might be less familiar, but we're going to go ahead and do it. It's going to play this melody in both octaves, meaning we're going to play it low, and then we're going to play it high in the second half. So here you go. I'll give us one and two and three, and we'll catch four and. So one and two and three and. Seventeen. This is a great old Scottish folk tune. Sometimes it's done with more swung eighth notes. Or dotted eighth followed by sixteenth. We haven't learned that trick yet. We're just going to play it with what we call even eighths. On the third line, third measure, last beat, there is a little half of a bullseye. That's a fermata. We're going to pause on that note and then go on. So it's just a dramatic pause is what that is. Now with this one, it kind of comes out of the C chord. And with all of these melodies, if they're tricky, if you can sight read them, great. Just keep on moving through the book. If you can't, then you just want to take them slow and learn them piece by piece, get them accurately, and then go on. So that's really the only way we can lock in the technique. If we just kind of kind of get it and keep moving on, uh, we don't really develop nearly as fast as if we take it a little bit slower, get it down accurately, and then move on. Then it all comes together so much faster. But we're going to go ahead here with me and play Martyr, do the best you can. So one, two, and ready, and go, and... <laughs> the chords and learn about power chords. Okay, so back in the chords, we're going to work on power chords. Now this is fun and exciting. For some of you, this may be your favorite concept, your favorite type of chord, because these types of chords, power chords, are the basis for so many rock songs. So the other thing about learning these power chords today is we start to work on this. We're going to work on a concept known as movable chords, meaning we're going to learn one shape we can play that we can move all around the neck so as long as we maintain the integrity of the shape it doesn't matter where on the neck
heck we go, we're going to get that type of chord. It's just going to change the key that we're in, so to speak, with that chord. So there on page 107 at the top, you'll see that the power chord just has the root and the fifth. I should do it in the key that it's actually written in, C and G. There's no third to these chords. The chord symbol has the root note plus the number five. Let's look at the movable shapes first. So you're going to see a sixth string form. That means that the root is on the sixth string. And you're going to see a fifth string form. That means that the root is on the fifth string. So if we play them just as written there, and we're going to use the diagram on the left, which just has two notes for now. It's got index at the first fret on the sixth string and ring finger at the fifth fret on the at the third fret on the fifth string. Now you'll see an alternate type, a shape, which will double the root in octaves around that fifth. Both get used, but the two-fingered one is a little bit more common more, uh, more often. It's used a little bit more often. That would be a better way to say that. So that's the sixth string form. The fifth string form is the same, only everything's a string higher. So our index is at the first fret of the fifth string, and our ring's at the third fret of the fourth string. You'll see the open circle in the diagram. That's representing the root. So that means that wherever that note is, that finger is located, I should say, along the neck, whatever note it's at along the neck, that's the version of the chord that we're playing. So down here, this first fret is an F, we know that. So this is an F5 or an F power chord. If I put my index finger at the third fret and play that shape, it's a G power chord because this is a G note. So on this other one, we're at a B flat there on the fifth string, so it's a B flat five or a B flat power chord. Second fret would be B and then C. At the bottom of page 107, you'll see a diagram of the fretboard of the guitar from, from frets zero through 12. At fret 12, things start over. So the open strings match fret 12, only it's an octave higher. E to E. So you could then continue on using the same uh, notes that we've seen below. When we play power chords, the shapes are pretty easy. The trick is learning and memorizing where the notes are along the staff. Right now, we're going to focus on where the natural notes are, and later we'll worry about sharps and flats. Sharps are just one fret higher than the natural note, and flats are just one fret lower than the natural note. But we are just going to worry about the natural notes. So, on the low sixth string, you can kind of memorize this pattern. Frets 1, 3, 5, 7, and then 8, 10, 12. That's where the natural notes are. You can see 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. And it just goes alphabetical. F, G, A, B, C, D, E. I could use the open string. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and I get the full octave. On the second string, it's frets 2 and 3. That's where there's a difference. It's just down here. 2 and 3, and then 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. So, low 6th string goes 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. The 5th string goes 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. Now, as we're playing power chords, we're mostly going to stay between frets 3 and 10 with the root. So really, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12 if I want to. 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12 on both strings. On the 5th string, though, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. The more we learn songs, the more we start to memorize these. So we're going to flip on over to page 108, and I'm going to help you as we do a couple of these songs that are written out. So, number one starts with a D5, and you can flip back and forth between the two pages and look at the diagram if you need to. But I'm going to help us count up to it. So we have that open A string, we already know where B and C are. So our pattern says, oh, we go up to the fifth, one, the fifth um, fret on that fifth string to continue finding the natural notes. And we just go up alphabetically, so C to D, so my D's at that fifth fret. And I put my power chord there. And I want to find the closest G. It happens to be down on the 6th string. So I'm going to put my index finger at the G on the 6th string. We know where that one is because we've played those notes with our note reading. So we got the D to the G. Then it needs a B. I can go to the 2nd fret 
Uh, but then to go to A, I'm gonna have to jump to the fifth. So we're gonna stay on the sixth string for this G, B, A. So the G's at the third fret. The B, if I go up alphabetically, G, A, B. B is at the seventh, and then A is at the fifth. If I go down alphabetically. So we're gonna have on the fifth string, the D at the fifth, then G's at the third, B is at the seventh, and the strumming pattern is just all down. And I'm going to try not to strum the other strings. And usually what I do with these power chords, unlike the bar chords, is I just I let my finger just rest on the strings and mute them so I don't have to push it down. If I strum, I can, they'll just be muted and it'll just sound like percussion. So I'm going to have D. got to do is create a string of power chords and then you know sing over it so we're gonna play this one I'll just keep can uh, keep repeating over and over and over maybe I'll speed up a little bit as we get going so we'll start off with the D5 one two red D and we got the D a little. We'll do one more, but you can hear how that sounds kind of rock, even if you're playing an acoustic guitar. If you're playing an electric guitar, you put a little distortion on, it'll sound even more like like rock. Now it's, I sound like acoustic rock. Number two goes D, and then it's got an E, so that goes up my alphabet from fret five to seven. And then G, we already know where G and A are. Now, you can use that reference on the other page if you need to. All down strums. Here we go. One, two, red, D, and D.
something that I do that you might find helpful is that when I'm playing the ones on the fifth string, I let my index finger sit right up next to the sixth string so that if I strum it, it just sounds like percussion. It just kind of mutes it there. Okay, I hope you're having a blast learning the guitar. We're going to continue to work with power chords in the next lesson, continue to work on some new strumming techniques. In the next lesson, we're going to work on odd meters, so strumming for 5-8 and 7-8. That'll sort of be our new concept there. We'll continue to review bar chords, so we're just going to keep with that tablature and note reading as well. It's going to be great. I'll see you in the next one. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.